Hi everyone, here's the Bookamics once again. And a few years ago, when I was younger, before I dived deeper into the world of studying literature as a profession, this world of, you know, big money, vast fame, uh, big headlines on all international newspapers, I was a very different kind of reader. Uh, or better, I chose my books very differently. What I did basically was that Every Sunday I would go to a bookstore in my native Monza, it was a second-hand bookstore. I would pick three or four titles I'd read during the week, and I'd choose those titles based on, I don't know, maybe I'd heard people talk well about them, maybe I liked the cover, maybe I liked the title, and that way I read lots of shit. Not really lots of shit, I read some shit, but I also found out about so many great writers and books I would never have known otherwise. Nowadays I really can't afford to do that because already I have a long list of stuff I should have already read for my PhD research, for my general interests, of stuff I should not really know and I still don't, and leaving those aside, I already have a long list of books I'd like to check out for my personal interest, because I think they, I, I would like them a lot, so I really can't do that thing where I step into a bookstore and I just buy books for the sake of it. I can do that, but then they're going to sit on the bookshelf for years, staring at me and reminding me of how stupid I am, but a few weeks ago I was in London and I had a few hours to kill, so I stepped into a Waterstones, a bookstore, and I uh, browsed the shelves for a while, and I found this book. And I liked this book's cover, and I like fl uh, flipped through its pages for a while, and I liked what I was seeing, and I decided to buy it. And I was like, fuck it, I'll buy this book, and I'll read it straight away. By the way, that day was also the first time... Yeah, it was really the first time a complete stranger recognized me. There was this guy going, hey, the bookchemist. Oh, yeah, it's me. And that guy was Jacob Tanner, who is a book, um, a booktuber himself. And he's a great guy. Check out his channel. Uh, his favorite book from 2016 was Slade House. He clearly knows what he's talking about. Check out his channel. But enough talking about me. I should be talking about Nimona by Noel Stevenson, which is an amazing graphic novel. These uh, originated, started as a webcomic, and I really have no idea about the origins of this graphic novel. I didn't do my research, but I feel that the first chapters in this book kinda show that this was a um, webcomic at first, because these first chapters tend to be shorter than the later ones, they tend to revolve more around jokes, whereas the more you, you, uh, you proceed into the book, the more narrative you get, and the more, uh, like, the, the more depth the characters acquire, and the more the story becomes interesting and thrilling. Nimona's drawings are kinda stylized and cartoonish, but also very pleasant to look at, and some of these panels can be quite lush and filled with details. The font is a little bit small, but that might just be a problem of, you know, transporting a webcomic onto the page. And the novel, the graphic novel setting, is one of its best features. It is, it uses a standard uh, uh, fantasy setting with many of the, you know, uh, usual fantasy tropes, like the knights in shining armor fighting against villains, but at the same time it throws in a few elements of the contemporary world and of science fiction, a few futuristic elements into the mix, and that's amazing, and it uh, creates amazing humorous effects, and it creates a fascinating world that's always a pleasure to discover chapter by chapter. One of the most innovative things about this book is its main character, this messed up young woman called Nimona. And one of the criticisms I get a lot, especially after my end of the year tops and charts, like best books I read in 2016, those kinds of videos, is that I don't read many women writers. And that's true. I would like to claim otherwise. Uh, there's no real reason behind that besides probably ignorance, but it's true, I don't read many women writers compared to the amount of uh, male writers I read. But one thing I'm very passionate about is female characters and the treatment of women characters in fiction. And one of the things you find most often in fiction that wants to, you know, change the way we treat and female characters are portrayed is that instead of portraying women as weak, as damsels in distress, they are uh, they are characterized as basically uh, kick-ass goddesses without any flaws. 
like I read an article once that was very good about the fact that you know great male characters such as Sherlock Holmes can be you know fascinating and weird and problematic and drug addicts they can be dicks to you to other people and they can be geniuses and such but good female characters most of the time are just strong they are just very strong and that's it Nimona changes that a lot because it features a main character who is kick-ass for sure she is amazing she is super fun but she's also kind of a dick and she is very as i said problematic and she has some kind of dark past and she has some trust issues even the way she is represented is amazing she's kind of short she's not your usual sex symbol and she is the sidekick of this very tall very handsome uh, very wise man called bernard Ballister Blackheart and what you would normally get in these kinds of narratives is the exact opposite You will get a male character who is maybe problematic and has some dark sides But is also very strong and who maybe do not confirm to you know standard uh, the standard norms on beauty Maybe is not that handsome and his sidekick or his companion is a woman who is super strong and super kick-ass and super sexy And here you get the exact opposite and that's great and it feels amazing and refreshing the way the book handles evil also a Avoids uh, the common tropes on the, on the topic and rehashed plot twists and the ending of this book is also fucking brilliant and very very rewarding and all of this you know portraying a great main character while making a point on the treatment of women characters or uh, uh, presenting a very satisfying and uh, very unexpected ending all of these are difficult feats to pull off and this book pulls them off beautifully Bottom line, I do recommend Nimona to anyone out there and now I feel much more like, you know, going into the closest bookstore and just browsing the shelves and picking up every book that stirs my imagination. I doubt I'll be able to do that uh, I, I, ever again in my life, but, you know, <laughs> it was nice to do that when I was young. Let me know if you've read Nimona or if this review piqued your interest. Let me know what you think about Noel Stevenson's other works, if you know them. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>